Hello everyone, I'm George from Ireland. So here I am at Eton in front of Godolphin House, as in it's one of the boarding houses. So this is where some of the boys live. Obviously nobody's here because of coronavirus. Um, so I'm, I'm filming this house because this is where um, Arthur Benson was a housemaster for um, uh, many years. He was, he was a beacon at Eton, let's say a teacher, for 18 years. So A.C. Benson was born at Wellington College, which is not so far away, is in the same county of Berkshire because his father was the founding headmaster of Wellington College, which is named in, honor, uh, named in honor of the Duke of Wellington, an old Etonian general and prime minister. So um, uh, A.C. Benson's father, Edward White Benson, he later rose to be the Archbishop of Canterbury, which is to say um, the most senior priest in the Church of England. Um, Benson had five siblings, and um, two of his brothers, one of his sisters, were um, noted authors in their own right. But um, he, in some ways, had an unhappy childhood, one of his sisters and one of his brothers um, dying in childhood, although that wasn't unusual, even for an upper-middle-class family at the time, because uh, being an Anglican clergyman back then was very socially prestigious. It was always at least reasonably well-paid by the sound of the middle class, sometimes incredibly well-paid, because some Anglican clergy came from um, aristocratic families, and even if you weren't, if you're from a middle-class family and managed to become ordained in the Church of England, you could be on the edge of upper class and as that that's where they were um, so uh, he went to a prep school in um, in Sheen London I don't think it exists anymore that area of Sheen is really what we now call Richmond upon Thames and then he won a scholarship here to Eton so he's a King's Scholar of Eton um, so he would have been Benson KS but KS behind his name I'm not sure if, if any of his brothers came here with him um, and then the main bit of Eton College is over there upper school lower school and through this archway behind there is college the houses where the king scholars live uh, so um, he was an extraordinarily academically gifted boy he worked sedulously um, and he was an outstanding classicist he wasn't that keen on sports on cricket on rowing on the field game things like that I'm not sure football if we know it was played here because um, competition between schools wasn't so important until well into the 20th century because transport was slower. Yes, the railways crisscross the country. Obviously, there are no, there are no automobiles when he was here um, uh, in the 1870s and into the early 1880s. Um, so horse-drawn carriages and so on. So each school played its own sport. It's only just about this time the Football Association was founded to actually set up what the rules were. So Eton played its sewer generous sports. Anyhow, so he was here for seven years, having come here at the age of 12 and the age of 19. These days he'd be here for five years. Um, anyway, then he won a scholarship to King's College, Cambridge. Now, Eton was founded in 1440 by Henry VI. That same year, Henry VI founded uh, King's College, Cambridge. Um, and the, the coat of arms of King's College, Cambridge is almost the same as the coat of arms of Eton. It was founded in 1441, King's Cambridge. So um, there, were, there were scholars there at King's College, Cambridge. And at that time, the, the scholars of King's College, Cambridge could only be scholars of Eton. They could go on to that if they wished to. Some of them didn't, went to other colleges in Oxford, Cambridge. And back in the 19th century, if you're an Etonian, if you're going to go to university, you, of course you would go to Oxford or Cambridge. You wouldn't even consider any other universities. Bearing in mind, back to 1828, those were the only two universities in England. And by the end of the 19th century, there were several more. It's only the 20th century became increasingly common and acceptable to go to what people would have called a provincial university, i.e. not Oxford or Cambridge. Anyway, um, so Benson proved himself to be an eminent classicist, and uh, he got a first-class degree in classics. So he so loved Eton, he did what <laughs> um, many people have done. They got out, got a degree, and got back quick. So there was one year after Cambridge, where I'm not sure what he was doing, before he came back here, and he was a beak mainly teaching classics. So um, he eventually became a housemaster of this house here, because in the 1880s things had changed. The last houses run by dames ended, a dame being a woman, an unmarried woman, you see the word dame here, um, who ran a house for oppidans, as in boys are not king scholars. So she charged a fee, provided the accommodation and the food and all the rest of it. But uh, she had to be an older woman, either a widow or a spinster. Um, uh, no, no, no dependent children. She could have adult children. But the boys shouldn't find her too physically attractive, as in she's, she's nubile. So they had, that's why they had to be considerably older than the boys. But as you can imagine, this woman on her own trying to control some rowdy teenage boys could be problematic. But um, so eventually from the 1880s, I said this will no longer do. We'll no longer have dames in charge. They've got to have a housemaster, as in one of the Eton Beaks, let's say the teachers, will be in charge of a house and only he can run a house. He can have the dame as well to bring a feminine touch, be a bit of a matron. So they have dames to this day. 
of a housemaster, now they've got a deputy housemaster. So he was one of that first generation of housemasters giving his, his initials to the house ACB, it would have been known as an AC Benson. So Arthur Benson, he may have suffered some mental bipolarity and uh, um, some um, uh, melancholia appears to have reflected him and others of his siblings. Um, Anyway, after 18 years, he went to Morden College, Cambridge, and he was um, provost there, as in the head of that college. Uh, Governor Gresham's, um, Gresham's School, uh, which is nearby, which is in Norfolk. He published uh, lots of uh, volumes of poesy. Um, he was very fond of ghost stories, writing horror, so he was a man of many parts. But he's best known for composing Land of Hope and Glory. So Queen Victoria died in January 1901, and her son Edward VII uh, became King of the United Kingdom and Emperor of India. So um, uh, anyway, Hubert Parry, another old Etonian of about this generation, was, was, was writing the music for that. Well, first of all, he composed the poem Coronation Ode. So um, his, 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 his pian to the monarch went something like this. I'm quoting from memory, of course. Um, uh, a land of hope and glory, thy diadem is set on sovereign brows, beloved, renowned. Um, uh, is it there? Then, once more, thy diadem is set. Thy laws have ruled thee well and long, by uh, freedom gained, by truth maintained, thy, thine empire shall be strong, and something, something still nerves a hero's son. Um, uh, so is it something, something won, then nerves a hero's son? And then it goes on to the best known bit, which is sung at the last night of the proms in Royal Albert Hall. Um, Land of hope and glory, mother of the free, how shall we extol thee who are born of thee? Wider, still and wider, shall thy bounds be set. God who made thee mighty, make thee mightier yet. And that's the, the climax at the end. So it's um, very blatant that it was written at the apogee of a British um, imperialism and self-confidence with the United Kingdom was the uh, world hyperpower, um, ruling a quarter of the world's uh, land surface and Britannia ruling the waves at the time is a very, very different situation now. But uh, it seems uh, jingoistic and um, chauvinistic these days, it might stick in the craw for some. But um, uh, it would get my scalp moving, um, even though I know the British Empire was not an entirely good thing. Uh, so then he, he never married, nor indeed did any of his sisters or brothers. And then he died, oh, I can't remember, was it in the 1920s? 1925. So that is just a little bit about A.C. Benson. This plaque's only gone up in the last few years. That's enough from me, so please book online lessons with me in history and politics and religious studies and French in law. Um, and help me with you. let me help you with your thesis, dissertation, essays and so forth. I translate from French, Spanish, Italian, German, Romanian and Russian. And I'll be your tour guide in London or indeed here in Eton. See if there's a house called the Hop Garden. On the pillow it says Hop Garden because hops, these fruits you can turn into, into beer. And uh, the Thames water being too foul to drink, the boys had to drink, had to drink beer, small beer with about 0.5% alcohol content. Um, so had to smoke to keep the plague away in the 17th century. So before chapel each morning, have you been drinking your beer? Have you been smoking tobacco? If not, you'd be beaten. Bad for your health. Oh look, that's the that's the royal flag. Looks like the royal flag. The half mast. It's not the school's flag. Who's died? Remember the royal family? I'm not sure. Right, signing off now. Toodle pip.